Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today I want to talk about a feature in Nina that's very much unknown and it's very very much experimental and it only works with refracting telescopes. It will not work with any telescope that has a central obstruction or spikes or things like that. It's basically contrast-based autofocusing which is what mirrorless cameras um, perform to achieve uh, focus. And the reason I implemented that in Nina was one, for the heck of it, two, because it could be used for, pla for planetary, and three, because you can kind of test your autofocuser and maybe even measure backlash or filter offsets during the day so you don't need to focus using stars. There's actually one more important reason that I uh, implemented this, is to see whether we could get rid of all of the issues associated with detecting stars and measuring their HFR. As we know, nar stars and noise can, like it's very difficult sometimes to, um, to make the difference, especially with uh, uncooled cameras, which means that we need to apply a lot of noise reduction before star detection. And that can cause like stars to actually not be detected when they should be detected. And that's been an issue for pretty much all like um, autofocusing software that uses the actual frame that you are imaging on um, for autofocus. And so with contrast based autofocus, I can focus on automatically on things during the daytime, but also um, on planets or on the moon, assuming my exposure time is low enough because I don't want my um, exposures to be overexposed. So that's quite important. Okay, so let me show you my screen. So right now, this little thing, this little lens here is uh, viewing one of my light switches here. And if I take an exposure, you can see 0.05 seconds. Uh, you can see it's pretty much like out of focus. It's somewhat close to focus, but pretty much out of focus. And if I look at my uh, focuser options, you can see that I have an autofocus step size of 10, which is actually what I usually use for this, uh, this lens. Also, you'll notice if I go back to imaging that um, I have the auto stretch on, but if I turn it off, you can see that at 0.05 seconds, I'm a bit overexposed, which is not good for contrast-based auto, auto focus, focusing. You really don't want to be overexposed, which you can check by use, by not enabling this uh, auto stretch. So you can see that in my uh, parameters, I put the autofocus time to 0.03 seconds, so almost half of what we have. And then you can see we have the autofocus method set to contrast detection, which again is experimental. I've only tested it with my own lenses. I have established that it doesn't work well for telescopes with a central obstruction. Um, so please be aware of that. Um, and then all of the other settings are pretty much the same as usual, except the contrast detect method, with the simplest being statistics and the more um, computer intensive or uh, computation intensive ones being Sobol and Laplace, which uh, perform convolutions on the image based on a matrix that will be a convolution matrix that will be more or less wide and that can take a bit of computing time to achieve. Statistics is extremely fast and um, you would see like the autofocus actually like run through all of those exposures very quickly. Um, so one of the things as well, if you're going to use that to measure filter offsets or to do um, uh, uh, in day uh, focusing, you want to make sure that you are using an object that is flat and your lens should be more or less perpendicular to that object because especially with lenses like this, there's a very shallow depth of field. And that means that the contrast based autofocus, which uses the full frame, we're not focusing on a specific region of interest, except if I use the uh, inner crop ratio, will be using like if there's parts of the frame that are in focus, and parts that are out of focus due to the angle of the sensor and the lens compared to the target, uh, on the whole frame will not be in perfect focus. So you need to make sure that you have something fairly flat and that does not have that doesn't have an angle compared to your image train to use that. And simply like far away buildings, uh, if it's just one face of a building, can work pretty well. Um, far away hills can work as well. 
um, but far away trees and tree branches might have issues because of the wind and you might not get repeatability of the results. But anyway, enough talk. With those settings here that I have in there, I can go to my autofocus tab. You, all, you see I already ran um, a focus run here, so spoiler alert, but I'm just going to start the autofocus from scratch. And it's going to do as usual, moving you know, through the autofocus steps, except that one of the difference you see is that there are much more steps taken on one side of the focus. And that's intentional. Uh, you can see that I have 10 initial offset steps. I might even want to use more. The reason is that uh, when you're using standard autofocus, the shape that you get is a hyperbola in theory. And that means that there's a, a well that you can simply roll down into to find the best focus. So it's almost impossible to miss. Um, with uh, this approach, you're using, you're having more of a Gaussian curve. And um, the extremities of that curve are flat, basically. So it's very easy to actually miss the point of uh, best focus if you don't have enough steps on each side. And you can see here, we're gradually getting more and more of that Gaussian curve, that normal curve, with the fitting, uh, also using a Gaussian fitting, which was a pain to program, by the way, but um, it's in there. And it's going through, it's going through, and it should be almost done. And yes, I think it is done now. So let's look at the image. Unlike normal autofocusing, there is no checking that we did better than uh, the original uh, focuser position. And we can see right now it's not in focus. Let's take one exposure. And there we are, perfect focus. We have perfect focus on this light, light switch on the wall and it's all automated, which means that I could simply run this autofocus uh, algorithm on this wall with a filter wheel going through the filter one after another and then see what result I get each time. Uh, here I got uh, 5,319 and if the next focus is 5,325, it means that my offset between the two, fil two filters is six focuser steps, right? So I don't need to waste precious um, imaging time uh, using like star fields. I can simply use that indoors or outdoors um, and just you know, during the day when uh, I can waste some, uh, some time. So that's one thing, but another thing is simply computing my focuser backlash as well. It's less obvious than um, the method that I highlighted in previous videos where you look at the flat part of the curve because the curve is already getting flatter on, uh, on one side. So that won't work, but you can try to see how the peak of the best focus moves between two focusing runs to estimate your backlash. So this is just, I think, a handy tool to have. It's experimental. It only works with refractors. Don't even try it on an SCTR on a newt. It's not gonna work well. Uh, I'd appreciate also feedback on anyone uh, trying that out. For me, it has been working. I've also tested it on the moon and on uh, planets, and it seemed to be working fine, which means that you could actually run an autofocus uh, in Nina and then switch to sharp cap or fire capture to do your planetary imaging. Um, that's pretty much it about this little, uh, little feature. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, if you find this useful, uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, otherwise, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time uh, with still more things about Nina and astrophotography in general. Thank you very much.